Well, here we are. This is what we've been waiting for to have you come from our Facebook over here to our website where we can teach you the layman's way. I want this to be an introduction before we start so we kind of understand why do we call it the layman's way. Who am I? My name is Dennis Lyons. I'm the Dean of Layman's School of the Bible. You know, God is so wonderful the way he teaches all of us. My ministry started in prison ministry. That's where God, I should have been in prison, but instead of being in prison, I got to go as a missionary. One of the things I learned is that if you try to teach too deep, too hard, too heavy to men that are incarcerated, not only do they say no to it, they'll actually let you know. One of the greatest compliments I got in prison ministry, and folks, I heard this hundreds of times, a man would come up to me, or a woman, we went to both, and would say to me, you know what, that made sense to me. I understood what you were teaching. That's the layman's way. That's Jesus' way. Notice that the greatest teacher that ever lived was not a theologian. He was a layman. He was the son of a carpenter. His name was Jesus of Nazareth. And when he taught concerning his father, he used every element that was available. He talked about clouds. He talked about seeds. He talked about birds. He talked about the common, ordinary things that people could actually look at and go, okay, I, I'm understanding. And we're going to be looking in that in the layman's way. Now, this specific series will be on our website. It'll either be under the title of The Layman's Way or it'll be up in the tabs for The Layman's Way. And it's very important that you understand I'm making this for anybody that wants to listen. But this is primarily for pastors and spiritual leadership that want to learn to teach The Layman's Way. We are presently in Africa, in both Kenya and Uganda and Malawi, and we're also in Asia. We're in India and Pakistan. We actually have satellite schools out there and more and more want to come every week so what is the layman's way and what can I what can I give you as a brief introduction all right let's try this the layman's way is a simple straightforward non-complicated explanation of God's word we believe the Bible can take be taken many different ways it can be taken spiritually or culturally, uh, but allegorically. But honestly, the only way that you'd ever be able to stand before Jesus and give an account of what you understood and what you taught would be to take the Bible at a literal face value interpretation. What do I mean by that? The scriptures are written to interpret one another. This is the Holy Ghost way. It's very important you understand taking a literal understanding. God means what he says, and he says what he means. Now, of course, there are figures of speech. We'll learn that in the school. But the layman's way is not complicated. Now, I have many theologian friends. Marv Rosenthal, Dr. Charles Cooper, Alan Kirshner. These are all learned men in the scriptures. But for the rest of us, wouldn't it be something if this Bible was written on about a seventh grade level? Can you imagine that in your mind for a moment? Well, how come I don't understand it? Maybe you're overshooting it. Maybe you're simply piecemealing it together. There are so many wrong teachings. I don't think there's been an era ever in the history of Christianity that has as many false teachings and false teachers that are just just prolific. They're all over the internet. They're all over television. And the problem is this. They all say they're rightly dividing the Word of God. Now, folks, not everybody can rightly divide it. It can be easier to be wrongly divided, like taking Scripture out of its intended context. Now, I want you to listen to one of your points. Now, you ought to have a paper with you, a pencil. Every time you come to the layman's way, you need to be prepared. So if you don't, put it on pause for a minute and stop. Get your Bible, get your paper, and get ready to take some notes. This is the only way you're going to be able to turn around and teach it to others. And we'll be looking at that in a moment. Uh, 
my, my education is 35 years in the ministry. I've never been to theology school. I've been a layman my whole life. But God has given me the privilege to teach thousands and thousands of people, both nationally and internationally. Right now, our ministry is growing. I have accomplished more in the last two years than I had in the 33 years prior. And I'm almost 70 years old. Isn't that exciting? So what is the layman's way? It's not a concept. It's kind of like a flag. You know, we're not flying a denominational flag. What we're flying is there is a way. It's called the layman's way. And we're going to be looking at it. All right. Why is the layman's way? And here's my new book. This is what we're going to be talking on. This is called The Layman's Way, A Guide to Better Bible Understanding. It's in a booklet form, and we have these that are available on our website. Uh, what do we mean a guide to better Bible understanding? Well, the key word there is better. In other words, why is there so much confusion? Don't you watch Christian television? How can you walk away thinking that you understand everything? First of all, they're talking literally. Then they, then they change it to spiritually. Or they go to allegorically. Then they slip back into literally. You cannot do that with the Word of God. It wasn't designed that way. And what's happened is we've went around parroting like the, like the bird what other people have told us, and we've not been like that little critter over here in America we call the ferret. It's a little squirrel-like critter, chipmunk-like critter, and it digs, 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 digs until it gets the prize. Do you want the prize? I believe if you'll watch this series, not only will you be able to understand the Bible better, you'll be able to teach it. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not a Bible teacher. You're either a teacher or a student in everything in life. You can teach if you did nothing more than got a hold of me and picked up a dozen of these books and sat in a home and read it and discussed it together. You'd all be better off. We want to change the world. That's why you need to go to laymanschool.com. That happens to be our site. And no matter what it says, we get sometimes from Facebook it'll say, not sure it's a safe site. Oh, don't worry. It's a safe site. You just need to plug on in and get into it, all right? Now, if anybody's listening and you want to go to that site, another way, you can email me to layman's school, L-A-Y-M-A-N-S-S-C-H-O-O-L at gmail.com and say, I want a direct link to your teaching site. I'll put it in there and you'll have a direct link. You don't have to go any other place. This is our goal. All right, now let's begin by talking about Scripture. Scripture is meant to interpret Scripture. You're going to find this out in the first two or three of these series. Now they're going to average 15 to 30 minutes long. Uh, the great thing is you've got a pause button. You can stop, go get a cup of coffee, listen to a phone call, and come back. Don't miss how important it is. So let's start out in our very first Scripture to prove to you that this Bible was written on about a 7th grade level. It's in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. Go there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. This is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And he says this, For we write no other things to you than what you read or acknowledge. Now that word actually translates understand. And I trust you shall acknowledge or understand even to the end, meaning the end of the age. So as long as we're down here, we are going to understand that this book can and should be understood. I mean, I want you to stop and think for a minute. Why would God preserve a word down here and only give the scriptural answers to less than 1% of the body of Christ. 99% of the people listening to me and in the world are not theologians. They have not went to Bible college. They're normal, everyday people just loving Jesus. 
And I've been given the commission by God himself to teach you what I believe will become the most common teaching in the world. If you'll help me spread it, if you'll share these videos to everybody you can, we will be teaching the layman's way. This is my promise to you. I will not teach you anything I cannot back in Scripture, line upon line, and precept upon precept. I will not take a Scripture from here, and a Scripture from here, and a Scripture from here, and say, therefore, this means. That is not Bible. The Bible is a completed book that the Holy Ghost wrote. Holy Ghost wrote what Moses penned. The Holy Ghost wrote what Paul penned. The Holy Ghost wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was penned by men, but it was authored by God. So here's the first thing I want to tell you. Paul said, we don't write anything that you don't read and understand. And we want you, we believe that you'll understand it to the end. So that's what we start with. Isn't that comforting to know it could be understood? Now, I know that we are inherently lazy, all of us. We just soon let the preacher tell us, and we may take a note. We may even, you know, many may sure don't even bring a Bible. They bring a Bible. By the time the preachers jump through three different scriptures, you're still on the first one. We won't work this way. We're going to work slow. We're, we're going to work methodical. Now, not everybody's going to want this series, okay? But I believe it's you. I believe you wouldn't have followed me on Facebook and then let me bring you over to this if you didn't truly and sincerely and honestly want to understand the Bible. And we're going to look, you know, I have over 50 videos there now, Colossians, Ephesians, the book of Revelation. You'll understand the layman's way by watching them, but this is for teachers. This is for you. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Uh, one of the things we want to teach you is if you found one T, you found them all. There's First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, and Titus. They're all there together. God's made this so easy. So go with me to Second Timothy two two. All right, listen to what this says. This is Paul talking to his son in the faith, Timothy. I have a brother right now in Africa. He's get, putting out satellite schools. And on his computer, on his, on his home page, he has this scripture. I taught this to him. I met him 15 or 20 years ago in prison. And he's been out and now he's a servant of God. He's a missionary. He's moving apostolically, setting up different satellite schools. See, it's never too late for you. He's 72. And he's just flown 10,000 miles to teach the layman's way. Let's learn it together, shall we? 2 Timothy 2.2 is the benchmark scripture of this ministry. Listen to it. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. And the things that you've heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Do you understand? It's, it's multiplication. What we've done is we fell into the trap of mass evangelism about 75 years ago. What was the problem with mass evangelism? It's still the same problem today. You put me in Africa in front of 20,000 people and I preach my heart out and people get saved and they love it and they go away and they do not grow because they have nobody following them up. They may have got saved, but folks, we're not down here just to be saved and miss hell. We're down here that we might be able to be light, salt, and ambassadors. Is that what you want to be? Then you can join me in the layman's way. Now, we're non-denominational. You know, it's not all up being Baptist or Methodist or Catholic. None of that's important. What's important is this book. This is God's word. This is precious. It's worth kissing. It's worth holding. It's worth coveting greatly because many people have no Bible. And many people have lost the Bible they had. So while you got it, let's study it. So what are we going to do? We're going to learn this teaching. That I want you to commit it to others. The simplest way to do this, if you're a pastor, is you need to be a part of our in-country coordinators. If you want to start a work, we do it with a minimum of 12 pastors.
We have a series of books. Marie has written four books for children called the Colt Series, and I've written five books. And with these nine books, we're able to show you from children to adults, the layman's way. Now, let's go, while we're in Timothy, to very same page, to 2.15. And then I'm, we're going to close this one off. It says, study to show yourself approved to God. It does not say read to show yourself approved to God. It does not say casually look at it to show yourself approved to God. It says study. Study as in labor. You have to spend time in the Word of God. Now, if you're out there and you have a gift, I don't care if it's a gift of music, if it's a gift of fixing cars, whatever the gift. Kenny has Crestview Community Television. He's been a friend of mine for 30 years. He cannot possibly have a successful television network unless he works 16 hours a day, just the way it is. And he gets paid, if he got paid by the hour, he gets paid about $5 an hour. He loves what he's doing. I love what I'm doing. And you have to love the Word of God if you want to study it. Study to show yourself, not to show God. God knows you. You don't know you. Study to show yourself approved to God. Watch the wording. A work man, not a slothful man, not a lazy woman or man. You are to study to show yourself approved to God as a workman. Now watch. That needs not to be ashamed. Do you understand there could be many people ashamed when he returns? Oh, they're going to be saved. They're going to heaven. Oh, how sad it is to know that you did not learn all you could in a simple, straightforward way the way God would want you to understand it. It's so simple. I think the devil has tricked us to thinking that this book is scary, like the book of Revelation. Why would God put a book in to scare you? He's meant to scare the lost, but not us. We're his children. Study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why do you think Paul told Timothy to rightly divide? The answer is because it can be wrongly divided. Listen, I've, I'm familiar with many different denominations. I've studied world religions. I've studied Christianity. And there's one thing, even with the Christian so-called cults, everybody believes in 2 Timothy 2.15. Everybody believes they're rightly dividing the word. But how can that be when they're so juxtaposed in their answers? No, if you want to rightly divide the word, you're going to have to do it God's way. You're going to have to do it line upon line. You're going to have to do it expositorily, which means you must continue to read the scriptures and let the Holy Spirit begin to teach you. Don't start reading the Bible without praying, folks. You ought to say something like this. Father, this is your word. I don't understand it, but I'm confident you do. I ask you that wherever I go, you quicken the spirit that lives within me. You that lives inside of me, quicken me that I might understand what you are saying. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How simple is that? Reverence this word. Folks, listen to me. Don't read this like you'd read Popular Mechanics or some other book. It'll never work. This is the divine authored book of life. And the layman's way says it can be understood. Now we're going to close out this particular segment. This was our introduction. We're going to have many parts to this. They'll be lined up in a row. I suggest you watch them one at a time. For those that are pastors that want to be take a part in this, we're going to have questions. We've got many alumni from our school that are willing to email you with the questions to see if you're actually understanding the layman's way. Would you like to join us? It's open for everybody. I don't know how many we could do. Bill went over to talk to 40 pastors and now it's 200 and he just got there yesterday. Listen, we know you want it. But everybody can't be right. You're going to have to have your heart hurt a little bit. You're going to have to understand. This is the layman's way. It's simple. It's straightforward. 
It is scripture interpreting scripture in a literal context. Your final thought is this. There are many applications in the Bible, but there's only one intended meaning. What do you mean? The meaning that the Holy Ghost meant when he wrote it. Now, how is the application different? Well, we're all different mature levels. So, you know, there's milk scriptures and meat scriptures. You know what you're going to find out in this study? It'll surprise you. What's the most milk scripture you know? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. What's the most meat scripture you're going to find in the Bible? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. You have to understand what he's really saying there. It's not anything to be flippant about. This is a time to study. This is a time to learn. This is a time for you to become your own best teacher by being the very best student you can. This is Dennis Lyons. I'm the Dean of Layman's School of the Bible, and you're in the series, The Layman's Way. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.